one yeah um okay so i'm out doing ministry work and yes the bible says you know don't do your works so others will see your works and great is your reward in heaven but this this is not for show and tell for others this is for show and tell for those of you out there who are looking for hope those of you out there who know that god sent his son to die on the cross for our sins and that Yeshua, Yahawashai, what many call Jesus, would not want us to pass up anyone. So this is Chris right here. And Chris is over here. And he has his Bible. I brought a Bible to share with him, but he, he already has has a Bible. So I was spending some time with him. He, he actually plays. He plays really good. You want to play something for him? Mm -hmm. he, he plays really good. The Impossible Dream. The Impossible Dream. Commonly known as the Quest. That's beautiful. So he's been playing for how long have you been playing for? Over fifty years. Yeah. Fifty years. And yes. you're you're homeless right now currently? Yes, ma'am. So can you do can you share your story with everyone? I would love to. Well, let's see. About uh, nineteen eighty seven of December. I was living in Los Altos, California, in a neighborhood called Dos Palos, which is a very exclusive neighborhood in Los Altos, California. Right. And my father, uh, when he retired in uh, 1986, sold that house on on Guadalupe Drive, at 541 Guadalupe Drive, for you three still million. The address. That's cool. Three hundred, uh, three million eight hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. The house is now worth four million four hundred seventeen thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The house was uh, originally constructed in 1966. It sits on nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine acres wow. of land, which is roughly about four acres right and the house is uh, a four bedroom house mm -hmm. uh, three full bathrooms uh, complete natural gas restaurant style kitchen that's because my father was a gourmet cook wow. uh, had his own gourmet restaurant in Mountain View California on the El Camino Real and it was called Lash's Gourmet Restaurant okay 
And my father uh, used to shop at a place called Dregers, okay. which is located in Menlo Park, California. Called Gregors, you say? Dregers. Dregers. Oh, with the D. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, he bought from the uh, piano and organ store in Menlo Park a uh, Steinway and Son grand piano that was polished ivory, uh, excuse me, polished ebony. And he uh, purchased that piano for $77,500. Wow. And uh, before we left uh, Montclair Way mm -hmm. in Los Altos, he donated that piano to our Episcopal Church in Los Altos Hills, California. Mm -hmm. And when he donated it to the church there, it was worth uh, $99,000. Wow. And the... Uh, Shomer and Son uh, Grand Piano that is uh, polished walnut uh, is at my father's uh, retirement townhouse okay. in uh, Napa Valley, mm -hmm. California. And my stepmother Enid got permission from the governor of California okay. to spread my father's ashes around the uh, townhouse in uh, Napa Valley, California. Okay. And what my father uh, died of is he died of uh, stage four bone marrow cancer. Okay. And this was because uh, back in the 60s, uh, my father was uh, working with chemicals in our garage on uh, Montclair Way. Okay. And they determined that those uh, chemicals caused bone marrow cancer okay. and that's what my father passed away of from at the age of 59 years old so were you living with him is that how, this, um, uh, how you I was up, up until uh, up until December of 1987 okay. and in um, September of 1997 that's when I uh, went from Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to uh, my sister Stephanie yeah. in uh, Redwood, Ca Redwood City, California, and we drove to Napa Valley okay. to see my father. Right. And when we saw my father there, uh, he was in real bad shape. Now you say Episcopal, our Episcopal church. Do you mean like that was the owner church, or that was your church together? That or? was my that was my church, and my father and my mother uh, Patricia. Jane. Oh, so you used to be a pastor. Uh, Lash. You, uh, were you a pastor? I am a I am a preacher now. Okay. Amen. Um, and the thing is, is uh, when I look at a uh, mercury vapor street lamp, I think of my father because uh, he designed the mercury vapor lamp, street lamp, so that it wouldn't fail for uh, thirty years. Okay. And what they used before that was they used incandescent light bulbs. Right. And the incandescent light bulb would burn out at uh, 7,500 hours. Okay. And the guy would get up on the ladder and he'd go up there and he'd change the bulb. And he's coming down and he's scratching his head like this. Right. And he says, now I wonder if some smart, intelligent fellow will, in will invent a street lamp that will not fail for 30 years. And that was my father, okay. Cecil Arthur Lash, Jr. Okay. His father, Cecil Arthur Lash, Sr., had his own business at 111 Heather Lane in Palo Alto, California, called it Lash Appliance. And he had a 42 two-panel Chevrolet truck with the doors that opened like this. Okay. And he called that truck Good Old Joe. <laughs> and my grandfather, he was uh, in the... Uh, San Francisco Chronicle and the Palo Alto Times Tribune okay. every week for things that he did for the city of Palo Alto along the Embarcadero. Okay. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So how did you end up out here, though? Uh, I moved from California in uh, December of 1987. And the reason I did that is because I do not like earthquakes right. at all. <laughs> right. And I was at uh, my high school, Los Altos High School, on uh, Almond Avenue. And this was uh, during lunch. 
and there was a square hole in the ground, and we had a uh, 5.8 Earthquake. earthquake on the Richter scale, right. and the ground starts contorting like this. Right. And I said, that's it. I'm out of here. I said, see you later. I'm blowing this popsicle stand. Mm -hmm. And I went to my father and my stepmother, and I said, Dad, and Enid, I said, I am leaving California, and I am moving to Ambler, Pennsylvania with my mother. And my dad said, why are you leaving California, Chris? And I said, Dad, I don't like earthquakes. And he said to me, point blank, he didn't like them either. Right. Not at all. So, to make a long story short, too late, my mother sent me an airline ticket from Pennsylvania, and she said, save up some money, because you're going to need it. I said, yeah, you're right, I'm going to. So, when I got to uh, Philadelphia International Airport, she uh, got me a ticket on uh, Wings Airways, which uh, is from an airport that's uh, in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. called Wings Field. And I flew on what is called a Islander. Okay. It's a twin engine aircraft. Right. And we flew from Philadelphia International Airport to Wingsfield BBX. Where is Wingsfield? Is that here? It's uh, it's in uh, Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. So that's leading up to how you got here. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so I so I get there to uh, Ambler, and I settle in with my mother in uh, Butler Park uh, condominiums in Butler in uh, Ambler, Pennsylvania, and from a guy that. Uh, lived in uh, in Glenside, Pennsylvania. I bought a um, 1975 Honda Civic right. and the color was red. Okay. And my license plate was PRG226. <laughs> right. But how did you end up out here though? Well, I, I came here from uh, Kensington, Pennsylvania. Uh, I was living on uh, Madison Avenue Did, in Kensington. And something and happened there on Madison Avenue? No, what uh, what I did was I came here uh -huh. to uh, study to be a pastor. Okay. And I started with um, Captain uh, Rick Boone okay. at uh, Salvation Army Church. Okay. And he uh, started teaching me to be a preacher. And then after he was, after he and his wife uh, Darlene Boone uh, retired in uh, July of 2019, he handed me over to Senior Pastor Daryl Arnold okay. at Overcoming Believers Church on Harriet Tubman Street. Right. And Daryl started uh, OBC uh, over 20 years ago. And he started it at uh, the Fifth Avenue Baptist Church with uh, Jamal Badgett and Leon and uh, Leanne Badgett. Here, I'm gonna turn this around. Hold on. And Hold on just a second, he, guys. Um, Hold on. And he raised the one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. To make the uh, down payment at uh, two eleven Harriet Tubman Street. Right. And that is where the church is now. And, so, like, what happened and, that you ended um, up here? It sounds like you turned your back on God for you to end up here, or did you just walk away from the church because you didn't like what they were doing? Or no, or it was uh, it was a it was a combination of multi things. Right. Um, the the thing that was very hard for me to uh, take and understand was. Daryl said to me that he said it would take uh, six months to a year for me being a deacon okay. before I could take the uh, two-month course at OBC uh -huh. to uh, become ordained as a minister. So so did Daryl deceive you? Did 
de were you dependent uh, on him and you yeah, were deceived? Yeah, to, to, uh, to a point yeah. he did. Yeah, so it sounds like you depended more on man versus God. Like you're more focused on what Daryl could do for you versus what God could do for you. And that's how yeah. you ended up here. Uh, so that's how God had it, me it, end up here yeah, to talk it, to it, you today. Uh, it seemed to, to, at the time, it seemed to be the right thing to do. Right. But the problem was, when I really found out what was exactly going on, right. it turned out to be definitely the wrong thing to do. Right. And I was like, going, okay. So. Well, I think, I think the reason that I ran into you today, because I just stopped here to, to use the outhouse. I'm actually on my way to minister right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, I saw you over here, but I really feel like God is calling you to repentance. Yeah, he I is. I feel like... God he wants you right. back into his arm to still do his work, minister yeah. doing his yeah. work. I used to, he, I used to smoke wants, too, he, he and I see that you smoke, and I used to smoke well, too. This is a, this is a vape. Yeah, same thing, but it, and, it's, it's uh, he wants, he wants, along that line. Uh, he wants me back into his fold because yeah. he loves me. He absolutely loves you. Yeah, he, does. he does, and that's why he had me stop by here to remind you that he loves you. And, you know, but he says that you have to, he says, today I present before you two roads. There's a road for life and there's a road for death. Choose which road that you want. Of course. And you if know we're going to. I'm going to choose. Exactly. I'm going to choose the one for life. Exactly. Because, and if, my dear, I want to live. Exactly. But I don't we. want to die. Right. No, but we're already like no, walking being, dead if we don't being, live for God. Being dead, I got news for you. Yes, sir. Being dead is no cup of tea. No fun. No. Nope. No. No. Uh, nothing. Not Everything at all. bad. Right. And I'm like going. This is not good. No, it's not. It's not oh, fun by either. The way, this is my little track phone. This is his little track phone, guys. This is way and, like. Uh, what? Give them your number if they can. If they can reach out and help you in the, any way. Uh, phone number is eight six five two zero three six one one five. And can you get text messages? Yes. Okay, he can get text messages too, guys. And my uh, email and his, he is has an email. on lowercase okay. lash Christopher133 at gmail.com. Okay, so God wants you to give your life back to him. Are you ready to say the sinner's prayer? Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Father God. Father God. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you died, that you sent your son to, to die, die on, on the, the cross, cross for, for my sins. sins. God, please accept me back into your life. God, please accept me back into your life. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. For I repent, Father. For I repent, Father. Please lead me out of this situation. Please lead me out of this situation. And the road that I went down to stray away from you. Yes, sir, ma'am. The road that I went down to stray away from you. The road that I went down to stray away from you. Please lead me on the right path of the straight and narrow. Absolutely, and amen to that. Okay, we'll say it. Please lead me on the right path of the straight and narrow. Please lead me on the right path to the straight and narrow. I believe in my heart that you sent your son to die on the cross for my I sins. I believe in my heart that you sent your one and only begotten son to die for me. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior and for I, the third time. Yes, Father. And there is no condemnation. No, there is definitely no condemnation. And thank you, God, for and saving my God, life. And thank you for saving my life again. Amen. 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 To Amen. That. Yay. So Yay. That's like. The, and I, hallelujah. I was gonna, <laughs> And I was going to give you a Bible, but you have Bibles. And I will tell you this. Bibles, Bibles. Yeah, I this, is, this is a good one right here, the KJV. Yep, Try it, to stick with that sure one. There is. And I do have um, the uh, study Bible from um, the New King James Version. Yes, sir. I love it. Try to um, be it's more fun. still and listen to the Holy Spirit, yeah. though. See uh, what the Holy Spirit you, has been for you. Could you me a big favor? Yes, sir. And run me over to McDonald's on... Uh, How about I go get McDonald's and bring it back to you? That would be phenomenal. What do you want to eat? I would like a Big Mac. Okay. Meal with no pickles. No pickles. Those are my favorite, by the and, way. And uh, I would love a nice, tall, 
Dr. Pepper. Okay. Big Mac with no pickles and a tall Dr. Pepper. You got it. Okay. And did you want like any dessert, like a apple pie um, or like a I shake or like anything? The, uh, I would like a hot fudge sundae, no nuts. Oh, okay. That sounds great. Because okay. Because you see, I got to tell you, <laughs> it's like they say, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes, sometimes you don't. don't. <laughs> um, enjoy that nuts. Sounds don't. Right. Okay. And it's like, it's like the jingle for Comet Cleanser goes and it goes like this. Comet, it makes your face turn green. Comet, <laughs> it tastes like gasoline. Comet, it makes you vomit. So drink your Comet and vomit today. This is really funny. This is so cool. So this is like your space right here where you yeah, sleep at? This is, this is what I call humble This is home. home. Your humble abode. This is yeah. humble abode. Home. This is home. It's like, it's like they always say. Home is where they understand you. Home is where you hang your hat. And home is also where well, get, they understand you. Well, get, get in you. that word and... Hang and, on one second here. Let me answer this. Okay. Thing. Hello, Joy. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I found so, out that uh, <laughs> um, some knucklehead had my uh, I wanted to share his story because God led me to share his story, it. so... Um, let me go get him something to eat yeah, and talk with him a little bit more. So if you can help him in any way, then he gave you his number. Just rewind the, the tape and see how you can, you know, reach out, even if it's an encouraging text message or something. Because if it was you, what would you want someone to do for you? And even if it's the word of God, continue feeding him the word of God and um, reminding him of God's love. So God didn't lead us here for no reason. So. Let's use our platform, not for our own self-gratification and glory, but for the glory of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? All right, you guys. Have a good day. Well, uh, so far he's doing all